Ever since I started editing, the number one struggle I had the most problems with was the graphs. My transitions were like very bad and I didn't know how the graphs work. For a long time, I only knew the speed graph existed and I didn't even know the value graph was a thing. So this video is mainly focused for beginners that struggle with the graphs, but also people that have been editing for some time and just want to learn new stuff about the graphs or maybe you'll pick something up that you didn't know before. So yeah, let's get started. First of all, the pros and cons of the value and speed graph. I personally think that the value graph is a little bit faster. And I mean, like the transitions you, for example, make usually look faster, while speed graph looks usually more smooth and a bit slower. With the value graph, you have just way more types of graphs you can make. You have like much more control and you can do everything in more detail, in my opinion. While the speed graph is just a bit simpler and faster to just make a simple transition. I've also heard that the speed graph is a bit better for 3D camera movement in 3D scenes. For example, the tutorial about 3D typography I have made. I also use the speed graph. And then the last thing that I really like with the speed graph is that every graph is basically the same. So when you have a bunch of different effects and positioning and skills and whatnot on your clip and you select everything, then the speed graph will be the same for everything instead of the value graph being different. Now I'm going to show you guys how the speed and value graph actually work and what you should focus on and then I'm going to show you guys a couple examples. So there are many, 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 many graphs. It First, when you're a beginner, it's like very hard to understand. You see the graph and you're like, okay, how does this work? When I do this, why does it go fast? When I do that, why does it go slower? That's what I'm going to explain first. This is a Twixer example, which I will talk about later. But first, I'm just going to open the graph. Like, I'm just going to show it and just explain a little bit, like, what's it all about. So this is the value graph. So you can right click and over here you see value graph. This is the speed graph. This is the value graph. Now, this is how it currently looks. This is not the default graph you will get. First of all, you gotta press F9 when you have just made your transition. And this is how the graph will look. Basically, you have two of these yellow, I don't even know what to call them, but with these, you can fully like customize your graph. So the horizontally flatter your line is, the slower your transition or time remapping will go. The vertically flat your line is, the faster it will go. Now, if I drag this graph all the way like this, you can see that it's very horizontally flat but then goes very vertically flat and then very horizontally flat again which means it goes slow fast slow and this is basically how it looks like so it goes very slow then fast i'm going to do the complete opposite like this now the line is basically horizontally flat which means these frames over here barely have any movement which is pretty clean but if you like truly want to use this for timer mapping then this is a bit too much but for now i'm just showing the graphs in general so you can also for example have it like this where it just goes very fast and then throughout the rest of the clip just slows down the opposite like this as well it just goes very slow and then towards the end very fast so it would for example look like this so in the beginning it barely moves towards the end it starts moving a lot and if i would do the show the other transition at the beginning it moves a lot and then towards the end it doesn't so those are basically the graphs. Now this, on the other hand, is the speed graph. As you can see over here, you have two of these yellow things as well, like you have over here. The difference is, is that with the value graph, you can move these around wherever you want. Whereas with the speed graph, these are like horizontally attached. So you cannot move them up or else this will happen. Uh, this whole thing will just move up. You can only move them from left to right. This is actually a little bit hard to explain. But if I move these all the way to the left, then it kind of represents the transition I showed earlier. The one like this, but a little bit different. So first it goes very fast and then slow down, which is pretty clean. The difference is, and that is why a lot of people for like actual transitions or whatever use the value graph, is that if you would go to the value graph again, you can just see that basically this one isn't used. So it's only this one that is dragged all the way to the left. That is why this is very smooth, as you can see. But usually for transitions, it is too slow and too smooth. So that's why a lot of people use the value graph. So you can also move this one a little bit up and this one maybe a little bit backwards like this. So you have a cleaner and faster transition. Whereas with the speed graph, you basically only um, use one of these sliders so if i would drag this like this and then switch back 
you can see that I'm only using this one over here. So basically, you only do this with the speed graph. Now, you can, on the other hand, do it differently as well. You can, for example, drag this one a little bit up and then like this. Um, and if you would switch back to the value graph, you can see that now this one isn't horizontally. But the thing about the speed graph is that, in my opinion, this is just so weird and unnatural that I just like this one more. Like you have much more like easier customization. You don't have to drag anything up and then move to the left and right. It's just very clear and easy to use, in my opinion. That is basically the value graph and the speed graph. Now I'm going to show you guys how you can graph, for example, for Twixter. So I've already showed this graph many, many times in two of my Twixter tutorials. But what you want to do is go to your graph. You want to drag the first one a little bit up and then the second one a little bit down. Because now it will go fast, slow, fast. And like I explained before, the vertically your line goes the faster the horizontally your line goes the slower so this one goes fast slow fast so that is what i've done for each clip over here and that's something which i really like now you should mainly do this for every clip especially if you keep having like all these clips in a row like you keep them like flowing basically when you timer map like that but if you want to end a clip for example there's also the graph like this which i also really like which goes fast and then just slows down like towards the end and it just doesn't do anything over here whereas if you would drag it like this it will go very fast in the end like i explained before which is better for transitions which i've also used over here which is very clean in my opinion now what i mean with ending your clip is basically here i have three clips in a row right so these this one goes uh, transitions from this clip to this clip and this one transitions from this clip to this clip but this one ends so instead of timer mapping the same like all these other clips what i like to do is use this one so um over here i will open up the graph i will simply press f9 and this could already be enough so let's see how that looks that's it's decent i personally would like to drag this one up a little bit and this one a little bit to the left so it's like more slow towards the end yeah like that pretty clean in my opinion and that's how you can for example end a couple of clips so now for transitions i really like to use the value graph as well it's just very fast but still smooth and it's not too smooth where it becomes like slow and just weird like it's just it's just perfect for transitions in my opinion so especially this one over here is a great example. I did a zoom out over here from 120 to zero. If you go one frame forwards, it never even reaches zero. It ends up being at around 90. And the reason for that is because with the photograph, you have so much control over both of these keyframes. So I can pull these two very close to each other. And what I like to call like a tight graph, where it's like very, very like close to each other uh, like this. And that's is very nice like this basically just shows you that there's like small movement like th throughout this whole part and over here it starts slowly zooming out more and more and more and more than it very fast over here and that is actually completely perfect for this so if i would do the uh, speed graph for example and i would pull this one all the way to the right and this one as well you can clearly see a difference and this one reaches 41 and why is that well it still looks like it it did the same thing right like it, it zooms out very slowly but actually if you go back to the value graph like i explained before this one doesn't do anything this one just pulls all the way to the right so this is actually a way too smooth or like way too slow graph that is what i like about a value graph i can pull this one together over here to make it less smooth or like less slow i guess this one is just it's just perfect <laughs> that's the best i can just say that like, i don't know it's just way better unless you can use the speed graph but you gotta like pull this one like way closer and then do the same thing for example this could be nice but but then this bar doesn't have any movement which becomes stiff you usually want to have like movement throughout the whole clip and that doesn't work with 
the speed graph like that. So that's why you should use the value graph. Now over here for this clip with the Twixer, I've also ended it like this, as you can see, because it's the last clip, like I explained before. And then for the skill, you can see that I've pulled both of them close to each other, but not too much because I want this one to like last throughout the whole clip. Like you can see over here as well, right? It just has movement throughout the whole clip. And that is something I really, really like. Whereas again, with the speed graph, if I would pull both of them all the way to the left, it's just way too slow. Like it's just way too slow. And uh, yeah, I rather just do this where it's just faster in the beginning and then slow towards the end with like movement throughout the whole clip so it stays smooth now over here is that 3d camera tutorial project file i did a while back what i did is i had a 3d camera and i added multiple nulls and i overlapped all of these keyframes so basically this is very nice for the speed graph because when i open this you will see that all of these are like separate and that is very annoying but when i enable the speed graph they all become one single graph now over here these are the markers, as you can see, two, three, four, five. What I like to do with movement is start a little bit before and then just end after that. So when you open this, you can drag these like this so that this point is on your marker, which means that it just goes slow and then fast on your marker and then slow again and if you overlap all of these you can see that if you overlap them there is movement throughout the whole clip like i keep saying and that is why the speed graph is so good for 3d and you can do this just very fast and easy with the speed graph obviously you can do this with the value graph as well but i don't know for this it's just very easy and fast to just do it with the speed graph so yeah that's about it. I hope this video helped you out. Please leave a like and make sure to subscribe. This video took a little bit longer than normally. Yeah, I hope it really helped you out. See you next time.